Hi, I'm Dr. Pasek. I'm a board-certified plastic surgeon in Manchester, New Hampshire, and I've been working with vaginismus patients for uh, quite a number of years. And this is? I am Ellen wilson John Cola. I'm Dr. Pasek's surgical technologist, and I am part of his vaginismus care team. We are going to be speaking about vaginismus and dilators. I think in any conversation with dilators, we need to speak about the Lamont classification first. And the Lamont classification, in my opinion, is very, very important in terms of stratifying uh, patients according to the severity of their vaginismus. Basically, Lamont back in 1978 described a classification system where a level one vaginismus patient was someone who had increased tone in the vaginal muscles uh, but was able to relax for an examination. A level two, they have the increased tone but they're not able to relax. In a level three, oftentimes the buttocks lift off the table. Level four, they're already in retreat. My patients have recommended that we include a level five vaginismus. There's this visceral reaction of hyperventilation and nausea and potentially vomiting and wanting to run away and wanting to jump off the table and even possibly attacking the doctor. The level ones and the level twos who are less severe will more likely be able to work with dilators. Once we get to our level threes, fours, and fives, Ellen and I find that these women can struggle for long periods of time where they don't even open the box of dilators. If they do open the box of dilators, they start with a small dilator and they may spend a year or two advancing to a larger dilator. I don't think this is good medicine. I think this is just taking much too long in order to get the patient to where they need to it's go. It's very traumatic emotionally for them to struggle with the dilators at that level four or five area too. I think you're absolutely right because this adds to their sense of failure. Mm -hmm. So before we even get into the dilators, this is why it's so important to understand the level of severity. And, and I find that patients are able to classify themselves very accurately. They know if they are level one or a three or a five. And when we go to treat them under anesthesia with the Botox treatments that we use for the vaginismus, it plays out right on the operating table where as we're putting them to sleep, we get the same kind of reaction. Except this time, we're in a controlled environment, the patient is getting medication, and the patient doesn't have to feel, oh my God, they have failed another GYN examination. We put the patient to sleep, we examine them, we uh, inject intravaginal Botox in order to paralyze the muscles, and then we do progressive dilation. And the progressive dilation, almost all of the patients tolerate a dilation right up to the largest dilator, and that takes us approximately 30 seconds to do. That's how With quickly... With minimal resistance. That's how quickly the vagina dilates up. So they go to recovery and we usually leave them alone for about an hour and during that period of time the vagina is dilating up. And then the next thing is... Without pain, which is No key. pain. And the next thing, which is the most monumental part of their treatment, is when they realize they have that large dilator in place. So they wake up and they have the large dilator in place and most of the patients can't believe that it's actually in place and doesn't hurt. That's the biggest thing. It feels a little weird because they're not used to something being there, but it's all just so exciting. And then they take the dilator out. Yes. <laughs> they take that large dilator out and they look at it and they say, that was in me? That's yes, unbelievable. They do. They do and then, that. believe it or not, they take it and they put it right back in. And their face looks a lot like his. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they do. So you work between those few dilators and they can put the big one in and out that first day quite comfortably. Like I said, a little awkward, but not painful. That's the key because the local anesthetics on board, the muscles are being stretched, so it makes it very, very easy. And that's really monumental for the women because they realize how significant of a size is in place and that they can move it around without having any pain or discomfort. You are supervised the whole time. The recovery room nurse is right by your side. She helps you work with the dilator. She shows your partner 
how to encourage you with the dilator. And it's really empowering that you have this in place. It's not painful, I can't stress that enough, and that you can actually do this. And that's quite comfortable. You can walk around with it. You can wear clothing So I'll just interrupt for a second. So the patient mm -hmm. is then discharged yes. with the number four of six dilator. Correct. Which then stays in place the entire for day. the rest of the day mm -hmm. and into the evening. They can go out. A lot of our patients take a drive out to the coast. We have a beautiful coastline half an hour from the surgery center here. And the dilator actually stays in until the next morning. Correct, and you're no more a prisoner of vaginismus. Then we need to go into the next day, and the next day some patients are starting to get a little bit nervous because they say, oh, the local anesthesia is wearing off, and will I be able to continue dilating the next morning? This is the fear that almost every patient has. Well, lots of them are nervous because once the local anesthesia wears off, it is a little uncomfortable, but it's not unbearable. It's just more of an awkward discomfort. Nothing that a little bit of ibuprofen doesn't help to solve. They come in the second day, and that's really kind of dilator boot camp and empowerment day. So it depends on how they did and what the comfort level was over the evening. We also call her Sergeant <laughs> But I'm a nice sergeant, <laughs> and it's a great result in the end. There is so much confidence building during the two days that they're dilating that our patients really do not have a problem once they go home. We have a, a separate YouTube that we've done where we've interviewed a patient who lives here in Manchester. She comes down very often to counsel our patients and she's now eight months post-procedure and she continues to sleep with the dilator every night because she says the dilator is your best friend and <laughs> she, does she doesn't want to regress and she had her own difficulties for a few years prior um, to being treated. But the dilation itself can be equated somewhat to the idea of an arm being in a cast. You have an arm in a cast for six weeks because you broke your elbow mm -hmm. and then you come out of the cast and what happens? The arm is stiff you can't really have almost no range of motion. The muscles and tendons are foreshortened. And there's a lot of similarity to what happens in a vagina that's been in spasm for a long time. And that's where the dilation comes into play. And the similarity is the physical therapist working with you to start range of motion. So first it's passive range of motion, then it's active range of motion, and then he'll tell you to go into a doorway and try to push that arm out, and it's going to hurt because a foreshortened muscle hurts when you're putting it on stretch. And that's why women have pain with vaginismus because the muscles in spasm, you're forcing it to dilate, but they're not prepared for that. And of course they have pain during attempts at intercourse. It takes months of physical therapy to get that arm relaxed, and it takes months of physical therapy for the vagina using dilators to get those muscles relaxed. And I like what you said, you know, they are no longer prisoners of their vaginism. I mean, the change after having a dilator inserted under anesthesia and the ability of every single patient being able to move that dilator in and out mm -hmm. is absolutely monumental and we always want to be a part of that because the smile is a mile wide. It is and it's worth it. Yeah.